Hello everybody, my name is Jack Carabanos and I'd like to present an interesting groundwater hazardous waste case study from New York City. Years ago I was asked to be on a scientific review panel for, the, for a citizens group for this project and it's a fascinating story that I'd like to share with you. Well it all started years ago when people needed groundwater for drinking water on Long Island. The Jamaica Water Supply Company was formed and installed a total of 58 wells. This is uh, this applied what is now Queens. That's the green area you see. In 1996, the New York City Department of Environmental Protection took over the company and started phasing out the groundwater supply. The water quality was basically deteriorating. That's when things started changing. But let me review some basic groundwater hydrogeology first. When it rains, water percolates into the ground and continues until it reaches a confining layer. On Long Island, there's bedrock and clay that stops water and allows it to accumulate. From this chart, you can see plenty of available water under Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island, the blue area. But one problem is as you go south towards the ocean, the water table level is very shallow. The area I'll be talking about today is in the southeast portion near Kennedy Airport, an area with historically shallow water table. So what happened? Well, when you pump water out of an aquifer, you lower the water table. The more you pump out, the lower the water table gets. Here you see, here you see buildings are dry, the subway is dry, and even household basements are dry. That's good. We want that. But when you stop or reduce the pumping of groundwater, basements and subways start to flood. And that's what happened. During heavy rains, household basements also started flooding. We stopped pumping water out because of contamination and homes and businesses started flooding. If we start pumping again, the water level will go down and the flooding will stop. And that was the plan. Here's a nice cross section to describe it better. The gray tube is the subway. In 1903, this was the water level. Pretty high, but that's because pumping was low. In 1973, after years of Jamaica Water Supply Company operating, the level was reduced by almost 35 feet. Basements and subways were dry. But when the pumping was stopped, the water level went back up. That's when the problem started. Pause the video for a minute to understand this image better. Around 2001, New York City began studying the possibility of reopening the Brooklyn Queens aquifer to supplement New York City's water supply. This would also address the flooding problem. The Brooklyn Queens aquifer project started and New York City started pumping water again. Here's a pumping station in the neighborhood. The water from this station, while completely drinkable, was never used and released into sewers, which made its way south to Jamaica Bay. But the renewed pumping had another effect. A toxic chemical underground plume started migrating south. That's the pink area you see. The Westside Corporation was storing dry cleaning fluids in large tanks on this site and selling it for distribution to local dry cleaners. Here are the dry chloro, dry chloro ethylene tanks that were leaking and contaminating the groundwater. TCE, as we call it, is great for removing oily stains from your clothes. But in environmental lingo, we call it a denapple, and it's bad. A denapple is a dense non-aqueous phase liquid, which means it doesn't mix well with water, like gas doesn't mix well with water, like gasoline, but is heavier than water and penetrates into groundwater. A denapple spill into a groundwater supply is an environmental disaster. And the sloppy operations at the Westside Corporation release large quantities into groundwater in Queens. When the contamination was discovered, 
The New York City Department of Environmental Conservation labeled it a Class II hazardous waste site, and the community was notified. That's a dotted area that you see. Remediation started. By the way, the site changed ownership and is now used as a parking garage for school buses. So what was done? Well, people and businesses still wanted dry basements, so the pumping to reduce the groundwater table continued. That's the blue area on the bottom left. Each yellow square is a well. But to address the chemical contamination, additional new intercepting wells were installed to collect and redirect the contaminant plume. You can see the original site here and the capture zone it's circled in red. The blue isopleth lines delineate the entire capture zone for a particular well. Today the site is clean and groundwater in the area is being pumped out and treated. But no water is being used for drinking water. And people's basements and the subway is dry again. Not to mention that a hazardous waste site was discovered and remediated. And it all started when New York City closed the Jamaica Water Supply Company in 1996 because of poor water quality. Well, I hope you enjoyed the case study, and please visit New York City DEP website for more information about the Brooklyn Queens Aquifer and the Westside Corporation. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.